Hello champions, hello everyone. So we finished the second round and I won! I did today! After yesterday's very bad loss I made the comeback and uh, most important thing I made this comeback against the uh, number one of the tournament uh, who is 2-6 two, two plus and uh, he was uh, number one candidate of winning the tournament especially he won the first game so it was very important win. Here I will share you uh, the, my thoughts what was happening and what what stayed behind uh, behind the game so c4 i decided to go c4 not e4 not our choice mode openings as my opponent is the second of aronian and he was here in the usa with aronian uh, during the singfield cup so i decided to just go c4 to play some normal chess <laughs> and let's fight in the chess not in the opening but something interesting happened in the opening he played knight f6 knight c3 e5 Knight f3, knight c6, here's uh, the main move for white is g3, uh, but I uh, played here e4, this is one of my favorite lines, I have analyzed this um, probably 10 years ago, then I teach, I told it to my other students, so it was, it become very popular, uh, recently, um, Carson also played it, e4, so a long time I didn't understand why people don't play this, it's very interesting, so now Carson played it this year, so now it will become uh, popular. Well, e4, what's happening? e4, uh, we, uh, I'm giving this d4 a square, uh, weakening him a lot. But the thing with e4, I am getting here full control over d5 a square, and I'm preparing next move to play d4, after which I will have a very good center. And uh, if played bishop c5, which was in the game, now I have this tactic, knight e5. Okay, this is uh, going the theory. Knight e5, everything is very typical, knight e5, d4, and getting back the piece. After uh, knight e5, if it decides to take bishop f2, I just take it king f2, uh, knight e5, and go d4. Yeah, my king is on f2, but it's okay, because I have very strong center, next is coming e5, after h3, knight will not know what to do, so it's bad. So knight e5, knight e5, d4, and bishop b4. Otherwise, if bishop d6... Uh, here I can take only 5, but I have even a stronger reply. I just play c5, taking the piece on d6. So I want to take it, and if it goes back, uh, bishop uh, e7, I'll just take it. Uh, d5, knight moves back, and I have a pawn up. I also can play queen g4, attack the g7 square. So black has lots of problems. So d4, bishop b4, the main uh, theory, d5, d5, knight e4, and queen f3. Uh, the main theory here goes queen d4, uh, but queen f3 I like much more. Uh, queen f3 attacking the knight on uh, e4, so uh, here the main game goes knight c3, which uh, I forced with queen f3 attacking the knight. And the thing after bc3, uh, I have very bad pawn structure in the queen side. But I have e5 pawn, and here I have queen g3, a very important resource. Uh, here I'm trying to get some initiative uh, for my development advantage, slight development advantage. After bishop e7, the plan is queen g3, taking the g7 uh, pawn. And if short castle, bishop h6, uh, using this pin. If g6, we win the exchange, uh, so it's bad. And after queen g3, if uh, black plays g6, here some bishop h6, controlling the dark squares, rook d1 is coming. Uh, white is playing we should be too short castle f4 f5 trying to get some initiative uh, so after uh, queen f3 knight c3 while it was the main move my opponent played queen h4 uh, this uh, was novelty when i was analyzing uh, after the game i saw this was already played one game uh, the idea of this queen h4 is very tricky uh, next move, blank want to take knight c3, and after bc3 they crushed uh, my pawn structure in the queen side, and I have no more queen g3, which means uh, he will just play after knight c3 short castle, and it's fine for him. Uh, so that was the game. So a3 was in one game, and bishop uh, e2 was in another game. Uh, but uh, there was something uh, interesting uh, for this moment, a uh, small story which I will tell you now. Uh, queen h4 move is showing the engine. It's showing queen h4, black is fine, everything is cool. And this queen h4 move was my uh, big problem. Long to long time, I couldn't find anything against this uh, queen h4 move. How to get some advantage? Because everywhere I had some positions which I liked, but against queen h4, I couldn't find anything. 
And finally, finally, after many months, I found uh, something very strong that that time engine couldn't find it. Uh, and uh, I was hoping that I will play this line a few times and finally someone will check my games and play Queen H4 prepared uh, with engine, but I had counter preparation, but uh, no one did it. And eventually, uh, after a few years, I stopped to play professional chess. I taught, taught this uh, line to many of my students, but still nobody came here. And finally, uh, Patricia Manuel, second of uh, Aronian coming Queen H4, uh, his preparation, but I had counter preparation against him. And the thing is G3, Knight G5, which is Black's idea. And after Queen E3, now when look like Queen on H4 and Knight on G5, he will lose one of these pieces. Black has here a very nice move, Queen E4, using uh, these both pins. So I cannot take Queen E4. Okay, I can, but after Knight E4 is fine for him. And also I cannot take Queen G5. That's the idea of this Queen H4. Next move to take Knight C3, not allow me Queen G3. And uh, if uh, if G3, Knight G5, Queen 3, Queen E4. So here engine is playing uh, queen e3, queen d5 move, some end games are going. But I had queen e2 move, uh, which engine didn't uh, see 10 years ago. I checked, uh, now today's engine, cloud engines, they see it around in a uh, half a minute. But okay, it's still long, yeah, it's very easy to miss for someone who prepared this line. Queen e2, the idea is that after queen e4, now I don't change the queens. But I take bishop g5 and f3 and suddenly opponent queen has problems. I'm going to play long castle and attack this uh, queen with bishop h3 and trap this one. And here my opponent uh, understood that he had some problems, but he found the right way. Uh, respect to him, bishop c3 he took. Uh, because if he doesn't take bishop c3, then after short castle, I may also have knight d5 uh, move, which will attack bishop on f4, c7 pawn, so it will be additional problems for black. So he played bishop c3, b c3, and b6. So uh, bishop is coming to help. Now queen f3 is coming. And the thing here is, if I play bishop g2, uh, queen h2 it takes. So still I cannot play rook h01 and trap the queen because queen g3 and queen is running. But after queen h2, I can play bishop h4. And now I want to play rook h1. But uh, the problem here is uh, he can play g5. g5 attacking my bishop and after bishop g5, queen g3. Or after g5, if I play rook h1, then he take, take um, g h5. Uh, g h5, some long castle, black is fine, black is better even. But after bishop b7, again, I had a strong uh, move, preparation, everything was at home. Uh, queen d2 I played. Uh, the thing is, after uh, queen d2, I attacked the d7 pawn. And after queen d2, if it takes on f3, then it will be nice checkmate. Queen d7 and queen d8. Queen sacrifice and a typical checkmate with rook, uh, using the rook and the bishop. Uh, but during the game, okay, uh, one more thing, uh, after queen d2, uh, the thing is at the end of the line we said bishop g2, queen h2, bishop h4, when he played h6, he, oh, sorry, g5. Now if g5, I will take queen g5. So this was my uh, preparation, queen d2 multifunctional move, attacking the d7 uh, and with checkmate and uh, preparing queen g5 against g5. So for example, if he played here... Um, yeah, short castle, let's say. Bishop g2, queen h2, bishop h4. Now uh, my queen is on d2, so no more g5. I will just take queen g5. Or the same is after bishop c6. Bishop g2 and bishop h4. Uh, no g5, I will just take with queen. That's the thing. Queen d2. But during the game, uh, I had a problem. I couldn't remember which one is the line after bishop b7. Uh, queen d2 immediately. Or bishop g2, queen h2, and then queen d2. Uh, so, uh, when my opponent played here queen h4, uh, g3, and here he thought around uh, 30 minutes. And from uh, this moment while he was thinking, instead of just walking, I was just sitting, walking around and trying to memorize how was the line. Uh, in my mind I was calculating all the stuff and he thought around ha half hour, 30 minutes. And around that 25 minutes, I remembered that my preparation, it was immediately, it was immediately uh, in this position, queen d2 without bishop g2. The thing is that after bishop c6, I have also option bishop h3. 
So there is coming a long lines. I will not uh, show you now. It's just boring engine lines. <laughs> but uh, at the end, at, uh, at the end, white is winning. So queen uh, d2. I would say queen d7. He played short castle. But now bishop g2, queen h2, bishop h4. Now if g5 he cannot, queen g5, and I'm going to play rook h1 and trap my opponent, poor queen. So bishop f3, uh, he should take. Give this bishop, uh, and after bishop f3, we have very imbalanced position. What's happened? Uh, I have a rook and two bishops against my opponent's uh, two rooks. Uh, bad for me, I had hor I have now a horrible pawn structure. Uh, one, two, three, four islands. Uh, all weeks are all, all pawns are uh, weak. Uh, but I have these two bishops. If I make them play two bishops, uh, do, doing a great job in such positions, especially against rooks, they are dominating all the board. If I can, if I manage to bring them to the game, and my opponent has one more problem: is uh, his rooks. He cannot bring him to the game uh, very easy, and the seven pawn is also a weakness. So it's giving me lots of uh, chances for advantage. After rook a8, uh, now if I take rook d7, it takes rook e5 with next move a g5. Instead of that, after rook a8, rook d5 move here I found it's a very cool move. Rook d5. Uh, now if he plays some h6, trying with g5, trap my bishop on h4. After h6, I will just go g4. And after g5, I have bishop g3, protecting the e5 pawns, and my king will come. And uh, when his rooks are there, it's very hard for him to use my weaknesses on c4, c3, and a2. And after rook, this, uh, rook d5, my opponent played c6. This is not the best move. Uh, because after c6, uh, now I take rook d7. So I played rook d5 first, c6, and now rook d7. The thing is here, after rook d5 first, c6, I will take this pawn. And after c6, my bishop will stay on d5. It is very nice outpost for him. And second, I have here bishop e7, rook e8, and bishop d6 move. While it would not be possible if the pawn was on c7. So that's why at first rook d5 and then rook d7. So bishop d6. Now I'm going to take the c6 pawn and uh, put my bishop on d5. Uh, rook f5 uh, here he played. Uh, bishop c6 and rook f2. Uh, trying to activate the rooks now. Rook e1 checkmate is coming. Um, at first, I thought I can play here bishop e7 and close this uh, rook on e8 to limit him a lot. But after bishop e7, he has rook e2, just attacking my bishop on e7. So I should go back, then he can take a2 pawn. So after rook f2, just king d1, not getting checkmate. Um, now, if rook a2, he takes the pawn, I will play bishop d5, backing the f7 pawn. I want to take and take the rook. And if rook f2, just rook a7. Uh, the thing is, this rook never can come to the game. Also, if some h6 or h5, yeah, I can play rook a8 as minimum. Uh, not to allow my opponent uh, rook e2, but even now he cannot play rook e2, yeah. I'll just take bishop f7. Um, rook f7, uh, just rook f7, king f7, and, uh, and king e2. So rook e2 anyway not possible maybe rook e3 is possible so as minimum as minimum i have rook e8 uh, change the rooks and after changing the rooks uh, my uh, bishops are doing a great job one is protecting the g3 pawn why uh, one is this uh, diagonal so rook f3 rook f2 both moves are not possible my bishop is controlling and my plan is to play c5 to change these pawns and then uh, c4 c5 um, uh, c6 c7 and c8 uh, queen. So this is a very simple plan. So after rook f2, king d1, my opponent uh, decided to go h5. So he with h5 he solved the problem with back rank. So rook can move and rook d8 will not be checkmate anymore. But here I have already bishop e7, limiting opponent bishop on e8. And rook e2 move is not possible because my uh, king is on d1, not on c1. He took on a2, uh, rook c7. Asking this rook on e8 and move from here, rook b8 and bishop d5. Now I am going to attack this f7 pawn. If, if I take it with rook and two bishops, I can even uh, checkmate this king on g8. Also, I have this c4, c3 pawns. Looks they are weak, but anytime I will have plan to play c5, c5, c6. And if it take, uh, take, uh, then next c3 pawn will go to uh, try to go to the uh, 8th rank. 
Well, bishop d5, he played a5. And now if I play bishop d6, attacking the f7 pawn here, he will have rook d8. And after bishop f7, a check, king h7, and here I have pin. Under, I'm under the pin, so bishop on d6 is having problem. If rook c6, uh, if I'm right, he could play here um, rook f2. Yeah, rook f2 and next move rook f6. So it will be some double pin. I'm here losing something, it seems. Uh, so a5 here, the thing is I have problem with king on d1. I have not much freedom. I cannot move my pieces uh, freely because uh, any not accurate move, a rook came to here somewhere on the uh, second rank and it, it's finished. So here I found a cool, cool, cool way to solve the problem. C5. Uh, C5, I attacked the rook on a2 and I'm going C6. After which rook d7, c7, rook d8 and I will win it. So after c5, he should give rook a1 check. Otherwise, if rook moves somewhere other, just c6 and this pawn will win the game. So rook a1 check, but now king c2. Now my king is not in danger anymore. And after bc6, here I can take bishop c5, but rook f1 and protect the f7 pawn. Instead of that, bishop d6. f7 pawn is much more important than c5. c5, anyway, I will take the c5 pawn. But with bishop f7, I will open my opponent king on g8. And if here he played rook f1, now rook on b8 is hanging. Uh, that's that's why after uh, bishop e7, uh, uh, rook a2, rook c7, I played. I could also play rook b7, Oops. rook b7, uh, rook c8, and the bishop d5, and I could play rook c7, rook b8, bishop d5. And here I decided to keep opponent rook on b8. Here is uh, y. Uh, after uh, c5, uh, rook a1 check, king c2 bc5, bishop d6, he played here rook f1, I have rook f7 move, and after rook f7, bishop b8, and next move I take uh, bishop f7, uh, king b3, king c4, and winning the game. So after bc5, not bishop c5, but bishop d6. Now f7 pawn is falling, after which black position will be lost. King h7, he played bishop f7, and uh, he didn't uh, resign easily. He put lots of problems for, for me from this position. Looks like everything is easy now. I'm going to take c5 pawn, h5 pawn. I can play some bishop e5, bishop d5, take g7 pawn with rook, checkmate him. Yeah, look totally lost. But here he found some interesting resource. He played rook a b1. Now if I take h5 uh, pawn here uh, with some checks, um, I may have problems. Check and a4, a3 are also coming. So I took uh, bishop c5. Uh, now I want to play some bishop d5, bishop d4, and g7 will hang. But here he played rook b7, a move that I missed. Uh, the thing is that after rook b7, rook b7, I cannot take bishop h5 because of rook b5. And now suddenly I'm losing one of my pieces. Um, after rook b7, rook b7, but um, position is anyway, it's a winning, just not to take h5. I could play here bishop e8, bishop e6, many moves. Uh, here I realize that my bishops should be together. So when you are having these two bishops and the position is open, it's very important to find for them outposts. So this bishop on c5 has a nice outpost on d4, but I should be very careful because if I leave this diagonal, uh, then opponent can some moment play a4, a3. So bishop on c5, I should be very careful with this bishop. And my bishop should be closer to my king. That's why I didn't play bishop e8, but played bishop uh, d5. Attacking the rook, so I uh, came back with tempo. Rook b5, bishop b4 check, so I'm not losing a piece. And the idea was, if you played king h6, uh, bishop e3 check, you should play g5 and c4. And now his uh, two pawns are blocked very comfortably. If h4... I all the time have uh, gh4 and because of this pin he cannot take gh4 and create post pawn. So I'm going to play c4, c5, c6 and seems I'm much much faster than my opponent with these uh, two uh, pawns. Uh, so after bishop b4 he played king g6. And now I could play bishop d4 but then a4 is coming. So bishop d6. Uh, bishop d6 keeping an eye on this pawn so if a4, a3 I will just take that pawn. Uh, with bishop d6, I also keep an eye on this diagonal. This was also very important. Uh, king f7 he played, but c4. 
my plan is very easy, c4, c5, c6. I should be just very careful uh, not to let my opponent somewhere to change this rook to this pawn and any of the bishop, because I have I will stage with just one pawn and uh, lots of position may be draw. Uh, c4 here he played rook uh, g5 but he lost here with rook g5 his last practically chance he could play rook b6 uh, this engine uh, says that after rook b6 uh, white is winning uh, very easy with c5 but it's not true here you can pause the video this is very interesting uh, with this he, he was uh, c5 i was not winning engine is showing that he's winning but not pause the video and uh, find out why Okay, the thing is that after c5, pawn can take rook d6. See d6, king e6, taking the pawn on uh, d6. And after bishop g6, it looks like, okay, we win h5 pawn, we give this, and it's winning, yeah? But here, black has h4, giving this pawn on h4, not on g-line. So gh4, and now I have light square bishop and pawn, so it's not the same color. And after king d6, King is just going to a8, and this is the position that uh, Shanklin uh, resigned uh, against Giri in totally drawish position. He resigned some, something uh, something like this, while it was absolutely a draw. Uh, so engine didn't understand this that uh, this is a drawish position. So after uh, c4 rook b6, uh, I should play bishop c7 just instead of c5 and still uh, winning but this would be a best practical chance for my opponent uh, by the way this is also a nice case why you uh, should not always believe engine uh, sometimes he make mistake also the mistake did uh, engine in this game for my opponent he showed to my po for my opponent queen h4 but it was not so good rook g5 he played uh, bishop f4 rook c5 and my king is coming to help this pawn king e6 king d4 rook c8 and here bishop d5 uh, check if king d7 i will play uh, c5 c6 with checks check check and if he gave this uh, it's uh, fine because my king is going to this pawns my bishop is protecting uh, this pawn and then i take this uh, two pawns and win the game because bishop i give to this a pawn after bishop uh, d5 check he played king f5 but now bishop d6 and my bishops here are just fantastic I was looking at this and was like, whoa, what the bishops. Uh, fantastic bishops. Pawn is staying on c5. King is coming here to stop the a pawn. And uh, my bishops, my opponent cannot attack any of these bishops. Everything is controlled. After c5, my pawn is, my bishop is controlling this. Uh, any case, if my king don't uh, here, uh, don't, don't uh, do the right with a5 pawn. And if g5, h4, tops if g5 h4 uh, take take again my bishops are just controlling here these two diagonals so he cannot push it also king cannot come because because of my these two bishops rook is also doing very bad cannot play rook b8 cannot play rook a8 because again my bishops he play g5 h4 even rook g8 uh, rook g1 he cannot play it my bishop is controlling so fantastic bishops and here everything is finished a4 was played king c3 uh, rook d8 c5 a3 king b3 g5 but here i'm just taking the pawn h4 take take king b4 h3 king c4 protecting the d5 pawn and preparing c6 rook d6 c7 and he cannot play rook d8 back i will take it and then c7 c8 a uh, queen he played rook h8 trying to go h2 but just bishop h2 uh, back plan is very easy c5 uh, c6 c7 bishop b7 uh, rook h4 check was in the game, king d3, uh, king f6, trying to go to stop my pawn with king, but two bishops are monsters, c6, king e7, uh, c7, now if king d7, bishop e6, check, and after king e6, c8, queen, I am winning, and after c7, he played rook h8, with hope of bishop b7, uh, king d7 to stop me, uh, but after rook h8, just bishop f3, not bishop b7. And if king d7, bishop g4 check, and then c8 queen. So soon I will have two bishops against king, very easy to win. And after bishop f3, if play rook g8, uh, stopping bishop g4, it's not stopping, because I can play bishop g4. Uh, king d7 is not possible, next move is coming c8 queen, if you take anyway, c8 queen. So after c7, rook h8, bishop f3, my opponent <laughs> resigned here. 
Well, very uh, interesting game. Uh, it looks like it was very easy, but in real not. My opponent was defending very, very good. Uh, unfortunately for him, he uh, did um, a wrong preparation after queen f3, queen h4. The moves that engine thinks that is the best move of the position, uh, even on very high depths, it shows that queen h4 is the best. And after g3 and g5, queen e2 shows at first like minus one. Many of my friends who was looking this game online, uh, like in uh, chess24 or chess bomb uh, somewhere or follow chess, they said, wow, what you did at first, it was very bad. Minus one was your position. But no, it, uh, engine thinks that it's bad, but in real, queen e2 is a very strong move. And also this game was very important for the theory of this line, because queen h4 move now, it's closed, and I think uh, on high level it will not met again, because uh, people will see this game. Uh, <laughs> okay, maybe I'll need to ask arbiters not to uh, include this game to, uh, chest to the database, but okay, I cannot. <laughs> So Queen H4 probably this is the last game, uh, first and last game uh, in the uh, on this line with Queen H4. So G3 and G5. Well, and uh, everything went first. The opponent played um, C6 bad move. This was the only his real uh, mistake. With C6 he made everything very easy uh, here. With C6 he made very easy everything for my two bishops. He should have played H6 or maybe some rook E6. Uh, still, white is. Uh, I'm here much better because of my two bishops, but it would not be so so easy. Uh, so take away from uh, this game: uh, don't always believe engine. Don't always think that okay, engine is showing that uh, black is fine or white is better. Uh, sometimes engine is uh, wrong. And here, I hope you uh, so uh, you took uh, the lesson about two bishops, how strong they can be in open positions, especially against rook. Just uh, whenever you have the two bishops, try to find some outpost for him. So opponent rook cannot attack him or bring him closer to your king so your king can protect. And put them on the center like it was in the game. My bishops on uh, d6 and d5. Uh, let me go there, uh, where it was. So here. My bishops are in the center. You saw yeah, already he is controlling all the diagonals. Uh, everything, all the squares. So <laughs> these two bishops are too, too strong against rooks. Whew, that's it. So tomorrow is the third round. I will again do my best. Yesterday I told you, yeah, I will do my best to win the second round. So I will do come back. I lost the first, but I don't care. So uh, tomorrow again, I will do my best to uh, win the leader of the tournament. He had uh, two and two, so I need to stop him. <laughs> Good luck to me and hope you enjoyed it. See you tomorrow.